And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who's guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. S-I-G-N-A-L Signal Signal Gasoline Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. For extra driving pleasure, the signal to look for is the yellow and black circle sign that identifies the signal oil program, The Whistler. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story The Chinese Elephant Puzzle. The night stretches black and humid over Singapore, and the murky heat teems up from the street through the sandals of the rickshaw boy as he pulls his fare through a narrow back street. Inside the rickshaw, impeccably attired in a white linen suit that is not yet wilted, sits Elliot Wilson, agent for Crawford Pierce Incorporated, art importers and exporters. Finally, the boy jogs to a stop. Elliot Wilson steps out onto a dimly lighted street corner, pays the rickshaw boy, and watches him trot off into the night. Once the boy is out of sight, Elliot turns, enters a door in the back of an ancient building. Inside the faintly lighted room, he moves unnoticed through the half-stupid crowd, through the tinkling glass curtain at the far end, and into a smaller room where Niels Hansen maintains his dingy headquarters. Hello, Hansen. Oh, hello, Elliot. I thought you were about due. Yes, I'm right on time. Did you ship the stuff out okay? Yes. <laughs> the Chinese elephant puzzle is on its way to San Francisco. Past inspection okay, huh? Perfectly. Why shouldn't it? Looks just like a small Chinese elephant. A puzzle with more than a hundred interlocking pieces. So finely fitted, you can hardly see the cracks. <laughs> you can't tell by looking at it that it's packed with diamonds. It, it didn't rattle or anything, huh? No, rattles nothing. Everything went fine. As simple as mailing a letter. And I uh, checked again to be sure it'll arrive in San Francisco on Friday. Uh-huh. This, uh, this guy in Frisco, Jim Craig, you sure you can trust him? I'm positive. And the gift shop he works for is a big customer of mine. Craig unpacks everything I send back. Friday, among other things, he'll receive the elephant puzzle. He'll take the diamonds out, hang on to them until I get there. He'll put the handsome little elephant on the shelf for sale along with the other things. A very simple operation. Simple for you. I did the dirty work. I got the ice. That was our deal, Hanson. If you weren't satisfied with your cut, you should have said so before. My bargaining position wasn't much good, remember? A guy with a record like mine can't make very good deals. What about the payoff? When do I get my cut? Your cut? Why, right now, Hanson. Hey, what's the idea? Here's your cut. Hanson crumples to the floor, dead from the quick, calculated movement of your knife, Elliot. That was his cut, death. You bend over him, make certain the payoff is final. And soon you're outside again, swallowed up in the pedestrian traffic of the Singapore night. You spend the next few days winding up your business affairs in preparation for your flight back to the States. And finally, the day of your departure arrives. Then you're airborne, the great plane streaking out across the South China Sea toward the Pacific, every hour bringing you hundreds of miles nearer to San Francisco. 
At last, on Monday, as you planned, you are there, setting down at Mills Field. And you're certain that Craig has received the elephant puzzle and its cargo of diamonds the Friday before. Less than an hour after you land, you're at the door of Jim Craig's apartment, and the anticipation within you mounts. But it isn't Craig who answers your ring. May I help you? Oh, I'm looking for Jim Craig. Uh, this is his apartment, isn't it? It was. I'm the house manager. What do you mean, it was? He moved? He's dead. It... Dead? But it... when? He was killed a week ago. A car hit him. A week ago, Elliot, Jim Craig was killed by a car a week ago. He wasn't alive last Friday to receive the elephant puzzle. He couldn't have unpacked it and taken the diamonds from it last Friday. You stand there stunned. And then you remember, the gift shop. That's it, Elliot. You've got to get to the gift shop where Craig worked. Find the puzzle and buy it. That's your only chance, Elliot. Good afternoon. May I help you? Oh, well, 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 Mr. Wilson. Hello. My goodness, I had no idea you were any place in the wide, wide world but Singapore. How are you, Evans? Oh, you know me, Mr. Wilson. I'm always fine, just fine. Except, of course, recently, just a week ago, our Mr. Craig... Yes, yes, I just heard. I'm terribly sorry. Of course you are, of course you are. All of us here, of course, family, you know. That's what we are here at the shop, simply a family. But then we're being brave, Mr. Wilson, simply carrying on. Yes, I am sure you are, Evans, and that's as it should be. Uh, you mind if I have a look around? I'd uh, like to see some of the pieces I've sent you. <laughs> For sentimental reasons. Well, of course, just you look all you like. Oh, thank you. Oh, I recognize that silverware. Pure Malayan. I must have sent that about three weeks ago, didn't I? You did. You did just that. And, oh, it is a good seller. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, is that uh, pottery on the next shelf. Uh, you know, I, I uh, wonder. Oh, then I, I suppose not. Uh, Looking for something in particular, are we, Mr. Wilson? Well, no, not really. Just a silly notion of mine. You, you may not remember it at all. Oh, now, don't say that, Mr. Wilson. Why, I remember every single little item you sent. It's so distinctive, so simply distinctive. Uh, now, just what are we looking for? Well, as a matter of fact, it probably arrived about last Friday, I imagine. An oriental puzzle, a small elephant. Oh, of course, of course it arrived, and last Friday, too. You know, I tried to work it. I just couldn't, just couldn't get it apart. <laughs> it's easy once you know how. Uh, I'd like to buy it back from you, Evans. I sort of took a fancy to it. Oh, I am sick, Mr. Wilson, simply sick. Why, what do you mean? Well, it's gone, gone. I sold it. I never dreamed you'd want it, never dreamed. Saturday morning, first thing Saturday morning, I sold it. Do you remember who you sold it to, by any chance? Why, uh, yes, uh, an elderly gentleman who was short and heavy set. His name? Oh, I'm afraid I don't know. <laughs> Tonight's $20 signal gasoline book goes to Robert Boone of Hollywood, California for this limerick. A salesman of fine reputation was driving all over the nation. Said he in a letter, my car drives much better on gas from a signal oil station. Signal, signal, signal gasoline. Your car will go far with go for the gasoline. It's always a double pleasure for me to read limericks praising Signal's performance. You see, Signal has become so famous as the go-farther gasoline, many drivers forget that mileage and performance go hand in hand. Both are the result of the extra efficiency today's Signal gasoline coaxes from your motor. So whether you're interested in economy or just in real driving pleasure, remember you get both when you get Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline.
It was going to be so simple, wasn't it, Elliot? All you had to do once Hanson was out of the way back in Singapore was to get to San Francisco and collect the diamonds from Jim Craig. But Craig was killed before the small elephant puzzle with a diamond safely tucked away in it arrived. And now you discover the elephant has been sold and the clerk Evans has no idea of the purchaser's identity. You turn and start slowly out of the shop. And then... Oh, oh Mr. Wilson. What? Uh, I just thought of something. Uh, the man who bought the Chinese elephant puzzle... Uh, as he was leaving the store, I remember he stopped to chat with one of the other clerks, uh, with Miss Solinston. You mean you think she... Uh, yes, yes, she probably knows him by name. Now, just a minute, I'll ask her. Early that afternoon, you're on the move again, Elliot, headed upstate toward a small community on the Sacramento River and a man named Alton Galloway, the man who purchased the elephant puzzle. By evening, your train arrives in Riverview. You duck into a small hotel and casually inquire about Mr. Galloway. And half an hour later, you're sitting in the large study of the Galloway home where he keeps his art collection. Galloway, a small man with a massive shock of white hair, sits at his desk peering at you over his glasses. And as you talk, his glance shifts occasionally to a table nearby, to the small elephant resting on it. So you see, Mr. Galloway, I expressly bought the Chinese elephant puzzle for a customer of ours in San Francisco, and um, through some error, it was sold to you. Yeah, it's a fine piece, excellent bit of work, a real buy, and incidentally, <laughs> a real puzzle. Yes, of course. I hope you won't be too disappointed. I won't be, Mr. Wilson. Oh, fine, fine. I rather... You see, I have no intention of returning the elephant puzzle. Uh, but, Mr. Galloway... A deal is a deal. Yes, but... Surely, Mr. Galloway, with all the many fine pieces you already have, I... Didn't I didn't buy it for myself, Mr. Wilson. I'm planning it as a surprise for my nephew in New York. It's for his collection. <laughs> He's a fiend on Chinese puzzles. You're sending it back east? Yes, in the morning. Oh, uh, excuse me. Your eyes follow Galloway as he walks past you and disappears into the hall. You've failed, haven't you, Elliot? You could offer him money, a great deal of money, couldn't you? But that would only arouse his suspicion. You'll have to find another way. And then suddenly an idea hits you. Quickly, you step around Galloway's desk to the French windows opening onto the patio. Slip the latch, and then hurry back to your chair. When he returns, you get to your feet. Uh, well... Mr. Galloway, I've already taken up too much of your time. No, that's quite all right. You won't change your mind, sir. <laughs> I'm afraid not. <laughs> well, I tried anyway. No hard feelings. No, eh? no hard feelings. As you said, Mr. Galloway, a deal's a deal. Good night. <laughs> Outside in the shadows, you don't have long to wait, do you, Elliot? A half hour or so after you see the lights in the Galloway house go out, you move quickly to the patio, slip inside through the French windows. As you move cautiously around the desk across the study, you smile to yourself. Realize how simple it's going to be. You've only to remove the gems from the Chinese elephant puzzle, replace it on the table and leave, and no one will ever know. Then, as you reach the table and pick up the elephant... I've been waiting for you, Mr. Wilson. Uh, you whirl at the sound of Galloway's voice. Then the lights go on. Galloway is sitting in the high back chair, a pistol resting in his lap. Surprised, Mr. Wilson? I... Look, Mr. Galloway, I... I knew I... you'd be back. I happened to see you from the hall while I was on the telephone. Saw you unlock the French windows. Now, if you'll kindly put the elephant back where you found it... Thank you. What's this all about, Mr. Wilson? Oh, all right, Mr. Galloway. Maybe we can make a deal. I'll give you a thousand dollars for the elephant puzzle. A thousand? Well, well, well. <laughs> that is interesting. Perhaps I'd better examine that elephant more closely. Must be something quite unusual about it. Something that I must overlook. Two thousand, Mr. Galloway. Is it a deal? Sorry. Now, if you'll... Step out in the hall. I'll call the police. Well, Mr. Wilson? Okay. Okay. You're making a big mistake, Mr. Galloway. Am I? I don't think so. Go ahead. After you. 
As Galloway steps aside to let you enter the hall, you see your chance. His eyes leave you for a moment. And in that split second, you lunge for the gun. The two of you fall back into the study. He's surprisingly strong and quick for his age, isn't he, Elliot? And you're having trouble taking the gun away from him. Twice he jams the gun butt into your chest, and the pain is almost more than you can bear. But you hold on grimly. Finally, you manage to grab his wrist, twist it sharply, and then... You stare down at the still form at your feet. He's dead, isn't he, Elliot? The gun still clutched tightly in his hand. You hadn't expected this to happen. And now you've got to get away as quickly as you can. But first, you're going to take what you came for. And as you turn and start across the room, you hear footsteps outside on the patio. You drop behind the desk, just in time, as a man comes running in through the open French windows. He hurries past you into the room. Mr. Galloway! Mr. Galloway! Get me the sheriff's office, quickly. You've got to run for it now, Elliot. You glance across the room to the table. The elephant. You decide that you can't risk going for it. The man phoning the police in the hall would certainly see you. So you slip quietly out through the French windows, across the patio, and run into the cover of night. You walk along the quiet streets of the village for almost an hour, wondering what your next move will be. You've made up your mind, haven't you? You're not going back to San Francisco without the Chinese elephant puzzle and the gems inside it, the diamonds worth almost a quarter of a million dollars. Somehow, you've got to get back inside that house, and then suddenly it all becomes clear to you. It's a bold move, Elliot, but you're certain that it'll work. You turn around and head back toward the Galloway house. Yeah? Uh, Mr. Galloway, is he in? Well, uh... I'm uh, Elliot Wilson of Crawford Pierce, art dealers in San Francisco. Uh, he, he'll know. Crawford Pierce, huh? Oh, yeah. I've heard of him. Come on in. I uh, uh, noticed the police car outside. Uh, something wrong? Mr. Galloway is dead. I'm Sheriff Coster. He said... Dead? That's impossible. I talked to him on the phone, only... It happened suddenly. I just can't believe it. Uh, accident? Murder. Mr. Galloway murdered? Good heavens. You, uh, you had an appointment with Mr. Galloway? Yes, as I did have an appointment with him. You see, we got some new pieces in from the Orient, and I thought he might be interested. I... Uh, Sheriff... Oh, all through in there, Perry? Yeah, it's all yours, Sheriff. You're getting back to the office. Okay. Uh, would you mind sticking around, Mr. Wilson? I might want to ask you a few questions. Oh, yes, I'll be glad to. Good. Now, Perry, I've got a couple of things for you to do. When you get back, call the coroner, will you? Hello. What? Oh. oh, I didn't mean to startle you. I'm Amy Ettinger, reporter, Riverview Sentinel. Uh, how do you do? I also run a Lonely Hearts column. Oh, and if you ever want any recipes, write to Aunt Clara. That's me. <laughs> uh, you're Elliot Wilson, art dealer. What? Well, yes, that's right. I, uh, I overheard you telling the boyfriend. Boyfriend? Yeah. Chef Coster. We've been going steady for five years now. He doesn't approve of my working for a newspaper. Oh, I see. Uh, come on, I'll, I'll show you some of Mr. Galloway's stuff. Well, um, the sheriff asked me to stay here. I... Oh, he won't mind. Like I said, he's the boyfriend. Mr. Galloway's things are worth a lot of money, I suppose, but uh, this oriental art <laughs> leaves me cold. But I, I ought to take some pictures of all this stuff. Oh, you're a photographer, too? <laughs> a small-town reporter has to be ready for any emergency. Uh, that's my equipment out there in the hall. Oh. Well, his uh, collection might make a nice story. Uh, why not take a few shots? Well, if you think so. Well, sure. Worth a try, anyway. Uh, you stay right there, Mr. Wilson. Be right back. The opportunity you've been waiting for presents itself suddenly, doesn't it, Elliot? And you find yourself alone in the room. Quickly, you slip the elephant into the pocket of your trench coat. In a few moments, the girl returns. Sheriff Coster is with her. 
It's all right, isn't it, Hank? Oh, I guess you can take pictures if you want to. Uh, just stay out of the way, huh? Okay. Uh, by the way, what'd you do with the list? Over there, on the desk. Uh, uh, Sheriff. Hmm? Oh, Mr. Wilson. I was just wondering, you said this was murder. Mr. Galloway was shot with his own gun. It wasn't accidental. Yes, but, but why? I mean... Uh, it's hard to say offhand. Could be that Galloway surprised somebody here in the study. It was a struggle, you know. Stuff here is uh, pretty valuable, isn't it? Well, yes. Uh, is there anything missing? Haven't checked yet. We'll know as soon as I look over this list. List? Uh, Galloway kept a record of all this, a sort of a catalog. Oh, yes, I see. Yes, of course, he, he would. <sighs> sure is a long list. Hmm. Uh, say, you're an art dealer. Maybe you could help us check this list. <laughs> I'm not much on oriental art. Well, of course, Sheriff. I'd be glad to. You spend the next hour checking over the items of the Galloway collection with Sheriff Coster. And you're relieved to learn that the Chinese elephant puzzle isn't listed. It won't be missed at all. Everything else on the list is there. The sheriff thanks you for your assistance and tells you that you're free to go. So you leave him thumbing idly through the catalog. Amy preparing to take her photographs of the murder scene. The Galloway Collection. On the way back to your hotel, you stop on a deserted side road and remove the diamonds from the puzzle. Smile as you gaze at them in the palm of your hand. Then you slip the gems into your pocket, finish breaking down the puzzle, and throw the pieces one at a time into the river. A quarter of an hour later, you walk into your hotel. Evening, Mr. Wilson. Oh, good evening. Uh, could you tell me when I can catch the next train back to San Francisco? Uh, let me see now. I, I don't believe there's one coming through till morning. Oh, not till then. Uh, just a second. Uh, that's right, 8.35 in the morning. Oh, that's all right. Leaving, Thank you. Leaving us so soon, Mr. Wilson? Oh, yes, I'm afraid I have to get back. Well, maybe next time you'll spend a little more time with us. Yeah, hmm? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed your visit. Yes, very much. I found my stay in Riverview pleasant. Very pleasant. Because the past several months of cold weather have been especially tough on car batteries, here is some news worth remembering. There's now available a vastly improved battery, much more powerful and far longer lasting. It's the new Signal Deluxe battery, sold only at Signal service stations. Unlike ordinary batteries, which may be guaranteed for 12 or 18 months, Signal Deluxe batteries are guaranteed a full 30 months on a service basis. And all during their long, trouble-free life, you enjoy up to 35% more power to give you really quick starting and to take care of the many electrical gadgets on modern cars. That's because Signal Deluxe batteries have micro-porous all-rubber separators, which hold twice as much acid solution between the plates. What's more, signal dealers will now give you a trade-in allowance for your worn-out battery, plus convenient credit terms if you desire. So to be sure you're getting today's best battery buy, remember the name of the extra powerful battery, guaranteed a full 30 months, the Signal Deluxe Battery. Remember where to get it, at your nearest signal service station. <laughs> The chase has ended, hasn't it, Elliot? The diamonds are once more in your possession. A quarter of a million dollars worth. And now you won't have to share it with anyone. The following morning, you board the train with the diamonds safely tucked away in your luggage. And finally, when you arrive in San Francisco, you hurry to your apartment. You're not going to waste any time cashing in on the diamonds, are you? You put in a phone call to one of your contacts that you're certain will make a good deal for you. And then spend the rest of the day in your apartment. Early that evening, you're sitting at your desk examining the diamonds when the doorbell rings. You slip the diamonds into the desk drawer and close it. Come in, Dave. Why, Sheriff Coster. Evening, Mr. Wilson. Can we come in? Oh, yeah, yes, of course. This is Lieutenant Newman, San Francisco Police. We're working on the Galloway case together. Oh, is that so? 
Uh, how do you do, Lieutenant? Hello, Mr. Wilson. Uh, you knew a man named Hanson back in Singapore, didn't you? Uh, yes, yes, I believe I met him once or twice. The Singapore police were after him in connection with some stolen diamonds. And they caught up with him last week. But they were a little late. He was dead. Oh, it's too bad. We've been told by Singapore that Hanson had arranged to have those diamonds smuggled into this country. When his body was found, the diamonds were missing. And Hanson had no money on him as his share of the payoff. Lieutenant Newman here thinks it all ties in somehow with the Galloway murder, Mr. Wilson. But how could that be, Sheriff? Mr. Galloway bought a Chinese puzzle in the form of an elephant. Our investigation shows that you had it shipped over from Singapore. I... Yes, well, I... I buy and ship so many things, I... Sure, I, I know. Well, anyway, that elephant puzzle is missing from Galloway's collection. Missing? But, Sheriff, you and I checked the catalog. Uh, it wasn't listed, I know. I guess Mr. Galloway hadn't gotten around to it yet. Well, then how do you know there was an elephant? These photographs Amy Ettinger took after you left. She happened to show them to me. I noticed something. I compared them with the photographs my deputy had taken earlier. You what? Uh, matter of fact, he was leaving the house as you came in. Uh, anyway, in his photograph, the elephant puzzle was there on a small table not far from the body. In Amy's picture, it wasn't. I, I see. Between the time my deputy took his photograph and the time Amy took hers, there were only three persons in that room. Now, look, Sheriff. I didn't take that elephant. Neither did Amy. That leaves you, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, I can assure you that elephant isn't here. You welcomed it. The uh, elephant is only part of it, Mr. Wilson. What we're most interested in is the diamonds. We have a full description of them. And the Singapore police are certain that when we find the man with the diamonds, we've got the man who murdered Hanson. What, what makes you think that I... We don't think anything yet, Mr. Wilson. But I'm afraid we'll have to search your apartment. I guess we might as well start right here, in your desk drawer. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine automotive accessories. Remember, if you would like the fun of having your friends hear a limerick of yours on The Whistler, the address to which to send it is the Signal Oil Company, Los Angeles 55, California. All limericks become the property of the Signal Oil Company. Those selected for use on The Whistler will be chosen by our advertising representatives on the basis of humor, suitability, and originality. So, of course, they must be your own composition. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman and Willard Waterman. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Gordon Gray and John Hunt, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember, at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. S-I-G-N-A-L Signal Signal Gasoline This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.